When you think about buying a new car, it starts out with a lot of excitement. I've been there, we've all been there. Then comes the financial part. You're often a little bit worried about the payment, maybe this car is a bit more expensive than you're used to, and then you start to rationalize it, saying, oh, well, I'll you know, have less coffee every month or something like that, which that's a bad idea for the record. Then you start to worry about the resale value and the depreciation you're gonna take a hit on when you buy a brand new vehicle. And if you're like me, you quickly just change the subject, start thinking about something else and forget about it and uh, come back to it later. Well, Elon and the self-driving team at Tesla may be changing that experience for all of us going forward. Let's dive in. Tesla just announced that they'll have robo-taxis. These are the fully autonomous Teslas driving people around starting late next year. But in Elon time, let's see, carry the two plus the thing. Uh, okay, maybe 2021, but they're estimating, and as they do rather optimistically, late next year, late 2020. And they've been able to do this by creating an entirely new processing chip designed perfectly for handing visual input and running neural networks. What's that, you ask? Well, in order for the car to drive itself, it needs to handle input from lots of cameras and sensors, then process that input into a decision as to what to do. Of course, this needs to happen in a split second as you're driving down the highway, traveling, and people try to cut in front of you, as you can see here. And it also needs to predict what the road will be up ahead, beyond the corner or even over the hill, which is essentially what you're doing based on your own past driving experiences on that road or roads like it. You see, our brains are special. They infer or guess what's gonna happen in any given situation based on past experiences. Now, those experiences are things you've personally dealt with, or they could be something that someone else told you about or something maybe you saw uh, on a video or somewhere else. Your brains are just constantly doing this. Right now, you're wondering what I'm gonna say next. What is coming up next in this video? It's gonna be good. But the point is, is that the computer, the car needs to also be able to do this. And so while your brain has millions and billions of neurons firing at, at every second, the car needs to be able to process information in a similar way. And this is essentially what Tesla's self-driving team has done. They now have a fleet of over 400,000 vehicles driving all over the world, collecting data in the semi-autonomous mode called autopilot. They use this fleet to find examples of what to do when the car encounters a new situation that it hasn't yet seen before. This is called fleet learning. For example, when you have a tow truck towing a tow truck, towing a tow truck, or when a bus makes a U-turn on the freeway, which happens apparently, <laughs> or when there's a random stoplight in the middle of the road meant for one lane but not the others, that actually confuses human drivers very often. Now all of these things are really hard for a self-driving car to figure out, but us as humans handle them perfectly. Well, m more or less perfectly. And Tesla feels now with the new processing chip that's able to do this kind of handling of this information and decision making uh, fast enough with enough redundancy, they believe that that is enough combined with their algorithms and everything else that by late next year, they'll start seeing these on the road and you could deploy your car into what they call the Tesla network, kind of like an Uber service, and it could make you money when you're not using it. Here's how the math breaks down. Tesla estimates a gross profit per mile of 65 cents, with that being 50% of the time for your personal use. This would have an annual mileage of around 90,000 miles, which is a lot, but the new battery packs that they're developing are rated to go 1 million miles, along with the motor and drivetrain, which are already rated to travel at 1 million miles without really breaking down or failing. This gives you around $30,000 a year in profit if you follow this exact measurement. Now, of course, these will change, so don't take this as gospel. Now, if you drove this much, I estimate that you'd pay around $4,800 per year in charging if you lived in California, plus maybe around $1,600 in tires because you'd be burning through them pretty quickly, another $1,500 in insurance or maybe more, and perhaps $500 in maintenance. These cars do take some amount of maintenance, and when you're traveling 90,000 miles in a given year, it's going gonna, it's gonna to require something. This means that each year you would net around $21,600. 
So with a purchase price of $40,000, you'd be cash flow positive in under two years. Not bad, right? Well, there is more to running a taxi service than just driving people around. Here's my friend Harry from the Rideshare Guy explaining one of the big challenges Tesla's likely to face when they go to deploy the Tesla network. All right. Thanks, Ben. So I've been driving for Uber and Lyft for almost five years, and I probably talked to over 50,000 drivers during that time through my blog and YouTube channel, The Rideshare Guy. And while driving isn't rocket science like Elon might be used to, it's definitely a little bit more challenging than it looks. And I think one of the toughest parts about driving is the pick up and drop off. And this is something that I think robo taxi fleets like Tesla are trying to develop and even other car companies. I don't think any of them are thinking about a lot of the manual input that goes into being a driver and especially pickups and drop off. So when we see these fleets launch, most likely they're going to be deployed in high density downtown type environments because really that's where all the demand is. And right now when you're picking up or if you've ever requested an Uber downtown, the driver has to make a lot of choices. There's nowhere to park. So do I pull over in a red zone? Do I double park? Do I go around the corner? Do I drive a block away? You know, passengers probably isn't going to like that. So there are a lot of these situations that the car is going to have to figure out. Are autonomous vehicles going to be allowed to break the law in those situations? My guess is that they won't be able to. So do we have to completely redesign cities now and get rid of street parking so that autonomous vehicles can park? So you can sort of see this is just one part of picking up riders. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of other issues. I mean, if you've ever driven Friday, Saturday night, you know that you've got to deal with the pukers. And I'd love to see how Tesla is going to figure out how to handle uh, someone who pukes in the back of the car. So we'll see what happens. How would you handle someone puking in the car? <sighs> in any event, it's an exciting time. And one I'm guessing that we're going to look back upon as kind of a pivotal moment in our society, in at least regards to, to vehicle ownership and how we move around cities and you know even more rural areas. I'm curious what you think, though. Would you actually send your car off to make you money while you're not using it? Are you comfortable with that? Or would you maybe buy a separate vehicle just for this purpose and maybe use it on your own occasion, knowing that you know this is like a car meant for that and if it gets dinged up or whatever, that's fine. I'm really curious because Beyond just the technical side, there is a human side to this. And by looking at the data and trying to understand what's going on here, I think it's an interesting discussion we can have. So leave me a comment down below and let me know. And don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you guys back here in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching the show. And thanks to Dandelion Energy for supporting it. Dandelion Energy is offering homeowners like you a new way of heating and cooling your home using geothermal energy. It's really cool, really interesting, and could save you up to 50% on your heating bill each year. Go check them out to learn more at teslanomics.co slash DE. And I'll see you guys back here in the next one.